Thank you. Some quite tough acts to follow. Um, what makes people do extraordinary things? What makes people go that extra mile? Do something when the chips are down, when everything is against them. Find some kind of resolve which allows them to have clarity, have a moment of, I will get through this. Find that unique magic that the human spirit can conjure up, that can take you out of a diabolical situation and elevate you to greatness. What is that? You all have it. We all have it. Some people find a way, a channel of understanding it, believing it, having the faith that they can step into an area which is out of their comfort zone. Why did Sir Edmund Hillary and, Tenzi, uh, and Sherpa Tenzing, why did they get to the top of Everest in 1953? What drove them? Others had tried. The last bastion to be conquered in the natural world. What was it? Why did Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin have the faith, the belief, that they could leave this world, our world, our gravity, our existence, and go in a tin can, Apollo 11, and ultimately get into a smaller tin can, the Eagle, and land on the moon? All the variables, think about it. Millions of variables could go wrong. Just one, one error, they wouldn't come home. They wouldn't come home to their families, their loved ones, their lives. What made Martha Luther King have the conviction to change a way of life to change a shocking imbalance in life and fight and struggle with that conviction to ultimately say, I have a dream and change that imbalance. I am fascinated about bringing the extraordinary out in me and everyone else. And funny enough, as Andrew said when, we, when he kicked off this whole uh, event today, this place here is a hallowed ground. The Royal Geographical Society. It's championed, it's supported, it's pushed, it's encouraged people from the beginning of time, in its 200, just under 200 year history, to go and explore, to go in to the North Pole, the South Pole, the top of Everest and a whole spectrum of smaller places, equally as important, to discover about themselves, to discover about what teams can do and what we can achieve if we really put our mind to it. If you <laughs> dig right down inside you to that burning desire that I want to go and see. My journey. My journey started, funny enough, in this very room. I was very lucky uh, to be brought up by quite interesting parents, and they sort of had two themes that they were quite keen that they passed on to their four children. And they're quite simple, really. Now that I have young, kid, young children, I sort of understand it. But predominantly, all they wanted was two things. They wanted us to be interested in life. And they also wanted us to be interesting as people. And when you think about that, that's quite simple. Because we only have one life. It's terribly short. And what you've got to do is you've got to embrace it. You have to have the confidence to do things that you dream of, but just feel that you can't do it because of your life, of the hurdles that are put in front of us that restrict us from doing things which actually galvanize you, your dreams, your desires. And they sowed that in us. And when I was 12, I came here to a lecture that a very famous explorer gave. 
and he'd just done this balmy trip. He'd gone from the North Pole all the way around the world to the South Pole. And I had some mates with me, and we all sat. We were completely enriched by this story. It, it hit something. It resonated so deeply inside me. But it wasn't a fear, oddly. It, was a, it ignited me. It was like everything and anything is possible. I can do anything. I can go and see all this stuff. We're not explorers anymore. The world has been explored by people who didn't have maps, who had no knowledge of weather planning. We are lucky because you can now, using technology, go and see and do everything. But it still ignited me. And since then, I have been very lucky. I've seen things. Well, I've been lucky and unlucky. I've seen things and done things that most people, unfortunately, won't be able to go and see. Why? I've never really understood it. Because you can all go and do anything. I've been a professional soldier and been to war. I've stood on the top of Everest. I've been to the North Pole, the South Pole. I've sailed round the world. I've ridden horses across Mongolia, motorbikes in Africa. Why did that happen? It's not what I do. I'm not an adventurer. What I am is I am an opportunist. And I'm nearly 50, and I, my opportunity has carried me to see and do phenomenal things which fuel my soul. I've seen pods of a thousand right dolphins in the Southern Ocean. I've seen the Northern Lights on so many occasions where you can just look and spend hours marveling at how intricate, stunning, colourful nature is. On the top of Everest, you look down and the world has curvature. You see that curvature. I've seen ice sculptures which nature has created in the high Arctic, which are so phenomenal, again, mesmerise you. One life. And all I've done is I've just got involved in it. Now, I'm not saying that this is what we all have to do. Everyone, as, has been to as other talkers have, have, have implied, it's what you want to do. This is what galvanates me, and I hope I continue doing it. So I'd like to ask you all a question. When you really start living, my experience is that when you step into the unknown, when you confront that horrible thing called fear. I can't do it. I don't have the skill set. I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the experience. Do a little bit of it, just a little. And what happens is you get a little bit of confidence. Confidence is a strange thing. It's self-perpetuating. And then you start realizing that you can walk tall. And maybe I could go into another arena and experience something else, which I never thought I'd be able to do. My question to you, though, is, are you following your dreams? Every one of you, deep down. Are you empowering some deep longing to go and do something, see something, test yourself? Are you doing enough? It's a never-ending question, and we all have it. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do. My point is purely and utterly, get involved. It is amazing how attractive you become. All of this has huge uh, effects on you as an individual how you are at work, how you are with your family, how you are with yourself. So, as I said at the beginning, I'm fascinated by those building blocks. 
what makes the invisible visible? What makes someone able to go and do something when the chips are down? The science of achievement, the physiology, psychology, and how technology can have its play in that. Those all fascinate me. How do you get the best out in people? How do you get the best out in yourself? My first of my sort of five areas that I think are pertinent to that very question are you have to have belief. Belief is a phenomenally powerful thing. As I said, everything comes from what, how you water your ability to be confident to step into the unknown. But the ridiculous thing is, as soon as you step in, you'll be amazed at how capable you are. We are built to be able to be good at stuff. When you are born, you're inquisitive. Babies grow into small children all the way along that journey until they become adults. All they're doing is searching, opening cupboards, going upstairs, looking in other rooms. Suddenly they're in your garden, then they're in your, your neighbor's garden, and then they're somewhere else. And then they're, What they're actually doing is they're just exploring. It is in all of our DNA, our DNA to want to go and learn. And it starts with belief. The trouble is, as we progress through our life, the edges of that belief can be knocked off. Masses of reasons, a plethora of reasons why. You have to hold on to it. Believe me, I am not an adventurer. I'm just a regular Joe who has followed a dream. And needless to say, I have become an adventurer. It's not what I do. But I've done so much of it now that I'm actually semi-good at it. There are lots of people better than me. I am a master of very little. Just believe. The second one, which I think is very important, is motivation. What's your motivation? What makes us do things, want to do things? It could be a mass of things. Fear, ego, wanderlust, wanting to improve oneself, hunger. And it can change. Mine has changed. When I started as a young man, it was ego. A selfish drive to go and see and exper experience things, test myself. As I've got older, that has changed into I love now the aspect of teamwork, of working with people, bringing the best out in people and then bringing the best out in me. The art of fulfillment, appreciation, giving back, caring, looking after this world, having a conscience. All those things have sort of crept into my psyche. So it can change your motivation. But the bottom line, to carry that phase forward, you have to go through a set of stages, which we all have to do. Discipline, hard work, set goals. If you don't have any of those, you won't achieve anything. You won't make the invisible visible. Planning and preparation. Everest, one in 10 people who climb that mountain will not come home. I have a good life. I have a lovely family, great friends, good business. And yet I took that challenge on. I took it on because it makes me feel alive. But I can assure you, every stone that we could, crop, we, we could uncover, we did. Our planning, our preparation, our, our, the strategy, all of that. So motivation is very, very important. Resource, resourcefulness. You can have all the resources you like. Money, time, experience. Doesn't matter. If you are not resourceful, if you don't have passion, drive, creativity, you won't do anything. My trip's now quite well funded. When I started, I didn't have a, a pot, nothing. Somehow you make it happen. And in a funny way, it's almost more fun. 
but it, you need that passion, whatever it is, whatever it is we're doing. Excellence. You have to strive for excellence. Steve Jobs said, be a yardstick of quality. It's true. Why can't we be brilliant? Why can't we make ourselves brilliant? Get up early. Work hard. Tick the boxes. It empowers you. Not from an egotistical point of view, but from what you can achieve. Failure. The fourth. We all fail. You have to fail. You have to trip up. You have to graze your knees. How the hell are you going to learn unless you go and fail? Failure is not a negative. Failure is a blessing. It's all about the journey. Embrace it. I have failed at so many things, but only once. You learn. The other thing which interests me on the whole topic of failure is a lot of us, and I'm sure you will f fall into this category with me, you will look at your life and go, oh, I could have done that 15 years ago, 10 years ago. You can't blame the past. And I had a funny story a few years ago when I was having lunch with my dad and I was chastising him because all my family, all my brothers and sisters are quite musical and as the youngest, I'm not. And I was chastising my dad because he stopped me having my piano lessons when I was about 12, mainly because I went kicking and screaming to them and he said, I've had enough. And he looked at me and he said, I'm really surprised that you're saying that to me because I'd look at it differently. I'd look at it, if you start playing the piano now, imagine how good you'll be when you're 60. <laughs> and it was a... You mustn't look back. It's so exciting, life. You can turn your hand at anything. I could, if I really applied myself, and I only have one cell, which I, brain cell, which I share with my brothers and sisters, but I probably could get on Leon's shirt tails and really start understanding about being one of those little minions to make a gigantic difference. But you have to just get on with it. The fifth and final thing is fun. You can enjoy every day of your life. Have a sense of humour. Be twinkly. Embrace it. Embrace others. Make other people better. The world of adventure is fantastic because at some stage, my life has been in a whole mass of other people's hands, literally. And conversely, their life has been at mine, hanging at the end of a rope. Whatever it might be, decisions you make. So what it means is that you need to do good things, honourable cries, integrity, honesty, trust, esprit de corps, all fantastic building blocks, which we seem to have lost. And, you know, some of the talks about businesses and how we look after people, we need to get back to this. I have it day in, day out, when I'm somewhere which is remote and slightly dangerous. But the funny thing we always try and do is have a laugh. Be you. Enjoy it. Learn. Have your eyes wide open. I like this, this picture because we are all here for a reason. It's not a mistake that all of you are here sitting in this room. Your existence is vital in the grand scheme of us making a difference. In essence, what I'm saying is that every one of you in this room, all your friends, all the people you don't know, you can all do whatever you want to do. If you believe in yourself, Embrace the unknown. It's such a colourful journey. But you must get involved in it. I'd like to leave you with a quick quote from the Goatee, 
which I think sums it all up. Whatever you believe you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has power, genius, and magic in it. Thank you very much.